Good evening everybody, it's Brett here, Lionheart84. I mean, you might wonder why um, I've got this uh, the camera focused on the surface of some compost in one of my seedling pots. Um, well, this video is just a quick update on how I've been getting on with the biological nematode control for fungus gnats and their larvae. Uh, it's just over a week ago when I made a video about trying this biological control and I can report that a week later that it's really been an unqualified success. The I picked this pot in particular because this one, this is one of my seedling pots and it had an awful lot of fungus gnats and larvae actually on the pot. In fact you could see large quantities of larvae moving around on the surface on it which is why I treated this pot first as well as all of the others. Now whether or not I can show you, I don't know if I can actually manage to get the pointer in to show you or not, let's see. It's easier said than done. Okay here we go. I don't know if you'll better see or not but there's some what looks like a mouldy area there a mouldy area there and a mouldy area there. Those are dead fungus gnat larvae. Now within a day of watering the um, of put watering this pot with the water that had the nematodes in, the larvae were coming to the surface and starting to die. In fact I probably saw at least two dozen on this particular pot and I would say that within a day the whole lot were dead. So this, I, I didn't know how long this would take. I thought these nematodes would take, um, you know, maybe two or three weeks to work. But in actual fact, they seem to have got to the fungus gnat larvae and destroyed them, literally killed them within two or three days. And a week later, I haven't seen any fresh fungus gnat larvae on the surface of this or any of my other pots at all. There also seem to be considerably less fungus gnats flying around. Obviously there's likely to be a few that will escape because um, the flies themselves aren't affected by the nematodes, only the larvae. But obviously once they've laid the eggs and the eggs hatch, one assumes that the larvae will um, be attacked by nematodes that are left in the soil. I don't know how long the nematodes survive in the soil for because I haven't spoken to the company that sold them. But um, I do know that it seems to have destroyed all the larvae that were in the pots, or certainly the ones I can see on the surface. And I presume that any larvae that hatch out will continue to be attacked by the nematodes as long as they're um, still in the soil. So anyway, it was. Um, I just thought I'd do an update video, but it's been, a, as far as I'm concerned, a, an unqualified success which was a pleasant surprise and obviously I'll continue to control the flies with um, the sticky yellow fly papers that are hanging up in the air. But I can show those now. I can show you those now. They're hanging up in the window. I've got two of them there. They have got a few flies stuck on them. But I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen any flies for the last two or three days. I'm sure there's still a few around because a few will hatch. But uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, the nematodes are well worth trying, and I'm very pleased with them. So um, might be worth having a go yourself if you've got a lot of uh, fungus gnats or scarid flies in your um, in your house or your greenhouse. Anyway, thanks for watching. That was just a short evening video. Um, Brett out for now. Uh, catch up in the next video. You're welcome to like share and of course subscribe if you wish and hit the bell if you'd like future updates uh, as I post the videos. Thanks for watching, Brett out for now.